Major, sir? Yeah. I've been thinking. It's a clear violation of the general orders, I know, but... Um... Last night, I'm at home. I'm sitting up buck naked. And I, I got one hand wrapped around a cold domestic beer and the other wrapped around my magnificent flaccid four and one half inch wonder. And I am <laughs> trying with all my might to remember what Layla Kaufman's nipples look like when her bathing top slipped off at the Hillendale Pool Swim Party. <laughs> <laughs> Layla Kaufman. Yes, sir. It's uh, summer of 72. Uh, I got this saucy wench in my gun sights, so to speak. And uh, I am dangerously close to engorged <laughs> when all of a fucking sudden, out of fucking nowhere, fucking detective fucking Jimmy McNulty pops into my head. McNulty. Obviously, I gotta open my eyes and admit to myself that my whole night is ruined. At which point, I got nothing to do but think about the problems of Jimmy McNulty. Because clearly, this guy and his fucking problems are standing between me and all worldly pleasure. Clearly. First of all, it's not Jimmy's fault. No? No. Jimmy is an addict, sir. What's he addicted to? Himself. <laughs> no, it, it's not funny, sir. As a matter of fact, it's a fucking tragedy is what it is. The guy, he has come to believe that he is always the smartest fuck in the room. And you know what? It's not his fault. Because, let's face it, he's not going to Johns Hopkins or joining Mensa. He's taking a fucking job with the Balmer Police Department. His first two years in homicide, he's in Omansky squad, partnered with Tony Lane Martino. Oh, Christ. It must have been months, even. He was the smartest fuck in the fucking room. What's your point, Jay? My point is, he can't help it. It makes him an asshole. I know, but... It's also what makes him good police. Last year, he gives me eight clearances. One of them was a decomp floater who was John Doe for three weeks. Tell your boy to wrap up that bullshit detail in two weeks. He does that, he comes home. Clean slate. <laughs>